The timing of the Operation Sandstone detonations was a matter of compromise between the Army and the Atomic Energy Commission. While the gamma ray measurement experiments required darkness, the pilotless Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress that would sample the clouds following the explosions needed daylight to control and accurately measure them. After much deliberation, the scientists agreed that all the detonations would take place shortly before dawn. In stark contrast to all previous nuclear tests of the era, Operation Sandstone would test new bomb designs for the first time in years. But while several improvements and modifications for the Mark III implosion bomb were under development at Los Alamos Laboratory even before the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, wartime pressures derailed the efforts. However, the United States expedited the proceedings when the Cold War emerged as the world's latest attention-grabbing conflict. By mid-1948, and with the help of the drones of the Atomic Age, the insights and footage taken by the B-17 started a new era of mass-produced nuclear weaponry. New Designs During the last stages of World War II, the development of the Manhattan Project at the Los Alamos Laboratory generated the United States' first two nuclear bombs, Mark I, Little Boy, and Mark III, Fat Man, changing history forever. Still, many improvements had been suggested by fellow Los Alamos scientists during the war, but were not a priority during the tense days of the conflict. However, it would all change during the spring of 1948. Around the time of the Berlin blockade, one of the first major crises of the Cold War, the Soviet Union blocked the Allies' access to the Western-controlled parts of German's capital. This incident gave the Americans a sense of urgency to bring improvements to the country's weapons stockpile as soon as possible. Then, in June of 1947, President Harry Truman authorized Operation Sandstone, a series of nuclear tests to be conducted at a new attack atoll in the Marshall Islands. Rather than measure the effects of nuclear weapons, like Operation Crossroads and other previous tests in the area, the Sandstone Trials would incorporate the first new weapon designs going back to Oppenheimer's Little Boy and Fat Man. In addition, unlike the previous nuclear tests in the Pacific, Operation Sandstone would be conducted primarily by the Atomic Energy Commission instead of military organizations, with the armed forces having only a supporting role. The team. On July 9th, a team consisting of the Atomic Energy Commission's Director of Military Applications, Brigadier General James McCormick, met with Los Alamos Director Norris Bradbury at the New Mexico Laboratory to discuss Operation Sandstone. Both parties agreed that since the tests would be scientific in nature, Los Alamos would supply all the technical directions while the armed forces would provide supplies and logistical support. Operation Sandstone's Joint Task Force 7 was then activated on October 18, 1947. It was commanded by General John E. Hull and consisted of 10,366 personnel, 95% of which came from the military. Meanwhile, Task Group 7.1 was the team responsible for preparing and detonating the nuclear weapons and conducting the experiments. The group was the Atomic Energy Commission's part of the project and consisted of almost 300 scientists and technicians. For the military's part of the effort, the work was divided between several units of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Armed Forces Special Weapons Project, and other related agencies. The duties performed by the Army units included structures, airstrips, base facilities, and other activities. In addition, the U.S. Air Force Task Unit 7.4.2, a specialized drone unit, was part of the established groups for the tests. The team was made up of 460 men from the Experimental Guided Missile Group at Eglin Field, and they would be responsible for the two dozen pilotless B-17 heavy bombers that would be flown into the explosions carrying sampling equipment to test radiation levels after the blasts. Finally, seven teams on various ships attached to different task groups documented the operation. 200-foot towers were installed in all the test sites to capture the events from different angles. Also, airborne photography of the fireball growth process was taken by two OA-10 and two F-13 aircraft, which would circle the surface Zero Island at a safe distance, flying up to 30,000 feet. 
and a film processing laboratory was set up on board an aircraft to develop all the footage. Setup. In February of 1948, six cores and seven experimental weapon assemblies arrived at the coastal Los Angeles neighborhood of San Pedro, California, and the weapon was loaded aboard the assembly ship USS Curtis. Still, the Atomic Energy Commission only allowed the expenditure of three cores in the tests. As the trial dates approached, the islands chosen for Operation Sandstone, and Jebi, Amon, and Runit were stripped of vegetation to facilitate the project. Each sandstone nuclear device was then lowered and placed on a 200-foot tower. If successful, sandstone would revolutionize America's nuclear arsenal. Although the three tests used a modified version of the Fat Man Mark III implosion system that was 60 inches in diameter and weighed over 10,500 pounds in total, the scientists proof-tested components and technology that would later lead to the fielding of the Mark IV bomb. The first test, X-ray, used a composite or ally plutonium core, while both Yoke and Zebra used an all oralloy core, a composite mix that had been in development since World War II. And while the operations behind the three tests were similar, the last two bombs were carried out more precisely as the crew and scientists' collective experience grew. X-ray. The X-ray bomb was detonated on April 15, 1948, just before sunrise at 6.17 a.m. With a yield of 37 kilotons, observers watching from ships in a nearby lagoon were able to witness the brilliant flash and heat, followed by a five nautical mile diameter condensation cloud. Almost immediately, B-17 drones filled the air near Ground Zero to collect fallout samples, while a remote-controlled tank scooped dirt from the leftover crater. Two weeks later, the Yoke nuclear device was detonated on Amun Island on May 1st at 6.09 a.m., after unfavorable winds pushed the date back one day. This time, observers noticed that the condensation cloud was larger, and the explosion sounded more forceful. As it turned out, they were correct. Yoke's yield of 49 kilotons made it the largest nuclear detonation up to that date. However, Yoke was considered inefficient and wasted valuable fissile material. Just like the X-ray test, the B-17 drones flew to the target area, and one of them made a simulated bomb run over the target area at H-hour, capturing photos and footage of the incredible sight flying at 20,000 feet. Still, neither the drones nor the piloted aircraft measured any blast effects this time, as the radiation would have damaged the exposed photographic film. The most important test. Zebra, the third test and most important of the Operation Sandstone series, was detonated on Runet Island at 6.04 a.m. on May 15th. During this final explosion, the base of the condensation cloud was at 2,000 feet, giving the observers an unobstructed view of the enormous fireball, and therefore appeared to be brighter and last longer than the other two. However, looks were deceiving, as its uranium-235 core produced an 18-kiloton yield. While all post-explosion sampling procedures continued the same process, this time, the personnel assigned to remove the filters from the B-17 drones suffered radiation burns. Within hours of reading the results of each test and comparing the mind-blowing footage from the events, the Los Alamos scientists back in New Mexico confirmed what those in the Pacific strongly suspected, that the new design principles were a stunning success. Outcome the successful tests were a significant leap forward for the United States' nuclear weapon arsenal. After May of 1948, almost every component of the old weapons was rendered obsolete, and the Mark III bombs were withdrawn from service not long after. Even before the Zebra test was carried out, Los Alamos director Norris Bradbury halted production of the old cores, ordering that all effort and resources be redirected to building the Mark IV nuclear bomb, the first mass-produced nuclear weapon. The new weapon began deliveries in 1949 and was a much easier design to assemble and maintain, reducing the bomb assembly team to just 46 people. The more efficient use of fissionable material also tripled the nuclear stockpile in only a year, from 56 to 169 bombs, 
while increasing the uranium-235 and plutonium production to unprecedented numbers, all with a lower price tag. With Sandstone, Major General Kenneth D. Nichols, Chief of the Armed Forces Special Weapons Project, believed that the era of scarcity was over, and rather than hundreds, America had thousands of nuclear weapons for the first time in history. Thank you for watching Dark Footage. Before you go, don't forget to hit the like button and share our video with someone who might like it. And for more incredible stories captured on camera, subscribe to this channel and check out all the others in the Dark Documentaries family.